Welcome to TechLogix. In this video, part of the Honeywell Impact Analog VDP series, we will demonstrate how to connect an electromagnetic lock to the system using a CAT6 cable. This method ensures a neat, safe, and reliable installation that integrates seamlessly with your existing setup. Before beginning, make sure you've already completed the connection of the indoor screen and door station as shown in our previous video. That setup is essential because we'll be using the same CAT6 cable for the lock integration. We will be utilizing the reserved CAT6 cable that runs from the indoor screen to the door station. Inside this cable, there are multiple pairs of wires, but we will mainly focus on the blue pair because it will carry the power for the lock. The brown pair, along with other wires, will remain in use for now and kept reserved for any future expansions or additional connections. Using the existing cable keeps the setup clean and reduces the need for extra wiring. Note, before performing any connection or integration, ensure that the VDP power is completely disconnected. This safety step prevents electrical shock or damage to your equipment during wiring. At the door station end, the electromagnetic lock will be physically installed, and its power will pass through the CAT6 cable. This approach simplifies wiring at the door and ensures that the power and control signals are transmitted efficiently. The lock being used is a DC 12 volt model, which requires a power supply rated at 12 volts and between 2 to 5 amps. Ensure your power adapter complies with these specifications for optimal performance and safety. Now, switch your attention to the indoor screen end of the same CAT6 cable. Carefully peel back or unwrap the insulation tape wrapped around the cable to expose the internal wires. Take your time to avoid damaging the wires, and identify the blue pair among the other pairs, these wires are designated for the lock connection. Keep the brown pair intact, as it is reserved for future use or other wiring needs. Next, carefully strip about half an inch of insulation from each of the wires in the blue pair using a wire stripper. It's important to remove the insulation gently so that you expose enough copper wire for a firm connection, but avoid damaging the wire strands. Do the same with the output wire from your power supply. Proper wire preparation is key to ensuring a good electrical connection that won't easily loosen or cause faults later on. Once the wires are stripped, you can begin making the connections. Connect the positive terminal of your DC power supply to the blue wire, and connect the negative terminal to the white-blue wire. Refer to your wiring diagram to verify the correct polarity, getting this right is crucial for the lock's operation. Make sure both connections are tight and free of loose strands that could cause short circuits or unreliable operation. After completing the connections, the next step is to insulate them securely. Wrap the joined wires thoroughly with electrical tape or proper insulating tape to protect against moisture, accidental disconnection, or short circuits. Proper insulation is essential for long-term reliability and safety, especially since the wiring will be exposed to environmental factors and potential tampering. Double-check all connections to ensure they are secure and properly insulated. Once you have completed the power connection for the lock at the indoor screen end, you can proceed to the wiring at the door station. At the door station, you will need to use a three-wire cable specifically designed for connecting the electromagnetic lock. This cable should include three wires, common, com, normally close, NC, and normally open, NO. For this configuration, since the EM lock is intended to operate in a normally closed, NC, state, your focus should be on connecting the common wire and the normally close, NC, wire. Prepare these wires carefully, making sure to strip each one properly. Use the appropriate tools to remove about half an inch of insulation from each wire, ensuring the exposed copper is sufficient for a secure connection. Properly prepared wires are essential for maintaining reliable operation of the lock when system activation occurs. Avoid damaging the conductors while stripping to prevent connection issues later. The common, com, wire acts as the return path in the circuit, 
while the normally close NC wire is active when the lock is in its default locked position. When the system energizes the lock, the NC contact will open, releasing the lock and allowing access. Making these connections precisely ensures the lock functions as intended, providing secure access control within your system. Next, focus on the CAT6 cable's blue pair, which includes the blue wire and the white-blue wire. These are designated for powering the electromagnetic lock. Assign the blue wire as the positive voltage line, and connect it directly to the positive output terminal of the indoor system's power supply. This ensures the lock receives the correct voltage when activated. The white-blue wire will serve as the negative line. Connect it to the door station's common, com, wire, which acts as the return path for the power. Ensure this connection is secure, and thoroughly insulate it with electrical tape or another insulating material to prevent accidental shorts and maintain system safety over time. Proper insulation is critical for long-term reliability. Since the EM lock is configured to operate with a normally close NC setup, connect the lock's negative wire to the door station's NC wire. This configuration ensures that, when the lock receives power, it releases and unlocks, providing a secure default state when no power is applied. Insulate this connection well to prevent any unintended shorts that could compromise safety or system operation. Finally, double-check all your connections to confirm they are tight, properly insulated, and correctly oriented. Once everything is securely wired and insulated, the system will operate reliably. When activated, the lock will open or close as required, providing a dependable security solution. Proper wiring and insulation are essential for ensuring consistent, safe, and long-lasting operation of your access control system. Power up both the DC power adapter for the VDP and the power adapter for the lock. Once both adapters are connected and powered on, the VDP system and the lock will turn on. The lock should have an LED indicator that lights up, signaling that it is powered correctly. This LED indicator also confirms that the connection has been made properly and is functioning as intended. To test the lock function, start by making a call from the door station. When the indoor screen rings, press the answer button to accept the call. Once the call is connected, you will see the camera's live feed on the indoor screen. When the system is in communication mode, press the key button to unlock the EM lock. If the lock successfully disengages, it indicates that the electromagnet has been demagnetized and the door can be opened. However, by default, the unlock duration is only about one second, which is usually not enough time to fully open the door. For practical access, a minimum lock open time of at least five seconds is recommended. This duration allows sufficient time for users to open the door comfortably. The unlock time can typically be adjusted through the settings in the indoor screen menu operations, where you can change the minimum unlock duration to suit your needs, ensuring smooth and reliable access. To adjust the door unlock time, go to the main menu on the indoor screen. From there, navigate to the mode option. Within the mode settings, locate the door 1 unlock time and set it to 5 seconds. Save the changes to ensure the new unlock duration is applied. This adjustment will provide enough time for the door to fully open when unlocked. The VDP with the EM lock integration is now functioning properly, including the customized door open duration. For more in-depth information about this analog VDP, please explore other videos in this series. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more DIY tips and electronics tutorials. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to ask in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.